Let's look at question number five for the 2017 AP Calculus BC free response. Let f be a function defined by f of x is equal to 3 over 2x squared minus 7x plus 5. Find the slope of the tangent line to the graph at x equals to 3. This is as easy as it can get. That's just finding the f prime of x, differentiating f, and plugging in x equals 3. So we know f of x, we know f of x is 3 times 2x squared minus 7x plus 5 to the negative first power. So negative 1 is going to go down, get multiplied by 3, that gets you negative 3, and you subtract 1 from negative 1, getting us negative 2, and you can put this below, so 2x squared minus 7x plus 5 squared, and by chain rule, you gotta multiply by the derivative of 2x squared minus 7x plus 5, which is 4x minus 7. So that's our f prime of x, and all they want us to find is f prime at 3. So that's negative 3 times 12 minus 7 gets us 5, divided by uh, 2 times 9, minus 7 times 3, plus 5, and you want to square that, what is that going to get us? Negative 15 divided by 18, minus 21, mi negative 3, plus 5 is, two, 5 is 2, and you want to square that, getting us 4. So you got negative 15 over 4 for part A. Now let's look at part B. Find the x-coordinate of each critical point of f in the interval 1 to 2.5. Classify each critical point as the location of relative minimum, maximum, or neither. Justify your answers. So we want to find all the critical points, which are the values where f prime of x is 0 or undefined. So we want to find values where the derivative of f is 0 or undefined. And we have the expression for the f prime of x, negative 3 times 4x minus 7, divided by 2x squared minus 7x plus 5 squared. And let's f start by factoring the expression at the bottom, 2x squared minus 7x plus 5. How do you factor this? Well, there are many ways of doing it. One way, the one way that I like to do is you can multiply the coefficient of x squared by the constant term and you can move it over to the other side, x squared minus 7x plus 10. You can factor this as x minus 5 over x minus 2 and you are going to finish up by dividing by the, dividing by the coefficient of the x squared term. So divide by 2. If they divide evenly, like in this case of so 2 over 2, you're just going to divide. If they do not divide, you're going to put it as the coefficient of x, so 2x minus 5. That's one way of factoring this. Another way is, of, of course, factoring by grouping. Whichever way you use, you should get this, 2x minus 5 squared, x minus 1 squared. So what are the critical points? Well, when is the fraction equal to 0? That's when the top or the numerator is equal to 0. Or when x is equal to 7 over 4. When is the f prime undefined? Well, that's when x equals to 5 over 2 or x equals to 1. But we only want the values in between 1 and 5 over 2, not including the endpoints. So that's the only critical point that we have. And what they want us to do with the critical point? They want us to determine whether that's relative minimum, maximum, or neither. Well, let's see what how let's see how the sign of f prime is changing from the immediate left of 7 over 4 and immediate right of 7 over 4 we also got 1 and 5 over 2 oh uh, let's by let's start by plugging in a value between 7 over 4 and 5 over 2 which which is 2 plugging 2 into this the bottom is always going to be positive so we don't have to worry about the bottom plugging 2 into the top 8 minus 7 is positive 1 Negative 3 times positive 1 is negative, so we have prime is negative to the right of 7 over 4, and a value in between 1 and 7 over 4 is 3 over 2. Plugging this in, 3 over 2 times 4 is 6, minus 7 is negative 1, negative times negative is positive. So we know f prime is the sine of f prime, the sine, let's erase this, sine of f prime changes from positive to negative, from the immediate, immediate, immediate left of 7 over 4 to the immediate right, 
immediate right of 7 over 4. And what's that telling us? If the function is increasing to the left of 7 over 4 and decreasing to the right of 7 over 4, you got relative max, you got relative maximum. So you have relative maximum at 7 over 4. So that's our answer for B. Now let's go on to part C. Using the identity that uh, they give us the partial fraction decomposition, we don't have to actually do it, which is, which is very nice. They want us to evaluate the improper integral from 5 to infinity of f of x dx, or show that the integral diverges. Okay, let's do that. We want to evaluate it from 5 to infinity, and our f of x is this. They broke it down for us. 2 over 2x minus 5 minus 1 over x minus 1 dx, and we want to take limit as the upper bound is approaching infinity of integral from 5 to b of the same thing, minus 1 over x minus 1 dx. What is this? That's limit. Limit as b is approaching infinity of, let's integrate this expression, that's natural log of absolute value of 2x minus 5 minus natural log of absolute value of x minus 1 from 5 to b. And that's what? Limit as b approaches infinity of natural log of 2x minus 5 divided by x minus 1 of from 5 to b. And this simplifies as limit as b approaches infinity of natural log of 2x minus 5 over 2b minus 5 minus tag. Let's put the absolute value sign to 2b minus 5 over b minus 1 minus minus limit as b approaches infinity of natural log of let's plug 5 into it so you get 5 divided by 4 and obviously the part to the left is going to be natural log of the limit as b is approaching infinity of 2b minus 5 over b minus 1 minus minus we get natural log of 5 over 4 and this we know this expression is equal to 2 so we got natural log of 2 minus natural log of 5 over 4 for the answer to part c so it converges now let's get part D. Determine whether the series, you, you see the, the series is corresponding to the integral. So they're looking at integral test. We have integral test for the series. Converges or diverges. We know this integral is converging. So we know the corresponding series has to converge. So we know the answer is converges. But what else do they want us to do? State the conditions of the test used for determining convergence or divergence. What are the conditions? Conditions are easy. One, it has to be positive. Two, the function f, for the function f, function f has to be positive. For, for the values greater than or equal to five, it has to be positive, it has to be decreasing, and it has to be continuous. Uh, they, did not ask us to, they did not ask us to verify the conditions. They just asked us to state it, and we stated it. So that should be it for question number five.